Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a crazy face powder explosion effect in Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see that I've opened up an image of a subject on a black background. And I've also opened up an image of a crazy colorful powder explosion effect that is also on a black background. Now you can do this with any image. It can be a powder explosion effect, a fire explosion, any image, as long as it's on a black background, because that will allow us to easily blend the color from this image onto our main composition really easily later in the tutorial. And you can get images like this from stock sites like Adobe Stock or Envato Elements, it's linked in the description, or you can jump on Google and just type in powder explosion. So we're going to jump back to our main tutorial document for now and start by adding a bunch of adjustment layers. And we could do this from the bottom of the layers panel by clicking the adjustment icon. And we'll start with a hue and saturation adjustment layer and just drag that saturation all the way to the left, just completely desaturating the color from our image. Then we'll add another adjustment layer and that will be a curves adjustment. And we'll grab the anchor point in the bottom left corner drag this to the right you'll see it starts to darken the darker areas of the image and then we'll just go up a little bit and our last adjustment layer is going to be an exposure one and we'll drag that exposure slider to the left and then the gamma correction to the right now for me personally i tend to find that having all three of these sliders in a diagonal line works pretty well for this effect but depending on the image that you're using you can adjust these however you like and remember that these are all adjustment layers so you can double click on the thumbnail at any time and you can instantly jump back into those settings so you have plenty of flexibility there now we're going to add one more adjustment layer so let's click that adjustment icon and select photo filter now you can use one of the presets from the drop down or you can click the color picker and just pick your own color. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using 3B33D9. It's this kind of bluey purple color. And we can then adjust the density. So the further we increase the slider, the denser and more visible this color is going to be. So we'll go for about 40%. And you can preview how this looks on and off by clicking the eye icon at the bottom of the panel. So we've created four adjustment layers. We're now going to hold shift and left click on the bottom one, selecting all of them and go to layer and group layers. And we can double click on the text here and call this adjustments. So we can turn this off and back on and see our changes. Now, where I've darkened areas of the image, particularly using that curves adjustment layer, we've lost a lot of detail around the eye. It's made it a bit too dark and around the lips as well. But fortunately, these are all adjustment layers that come with a mask. So we can simply click on the curves adjustment layer, specifically on the mask, so it's selected. Now the mask is white, so the effect is visible. And if we select black as our foreground color, the brush tool, and one of Photoshop's soft round pressure opacity brushes, we can adjust the size up here. We can then remove from the mask. Now remember, anything white adds to the mask or is visible and anything that is black removes from the mask or is invisible. So at the moment, the whole mask is white. We can see that curves effect darkening our image. So if we brush in some black onto that mask, you can see it appears on the mask here and it's removing that curves effect from this area that we're brushing. So if I preview how it was, and how it is now, we can see that we've brought back some of that detail into the eye and the lips on our subject. So let's go and collapse, collapse, collapse the adjustment panel. And we're then going to grab our crazy explosion effect or whatever image it is you're using. So open this in Photoshop and go select all. You'll see the marching ants appear that just indicate that the canvas is selected and then go edit, copy, switch back over to the main document and go edit and paste and then we can just give this a layer name so i'll call this powder explosion 
and we can then instantly blend this into the background by changing the blending mode from normal to screen. Now this is the advantage to having that black background because it removes that and blends the color onto the image. But we can't really see much of the image through this. So first of all, let's go to edit and free transform and just position this color explosion or whatever effect you're using where you would like it to appear on the subject. So we could go and flip this horizontally as well. And I'll just scale this up. So I'm going to position this something like this, I think. Don't worry if you'd like to adjust it, we can do that a little bit later as well. So just press return to set that transformation. Now you can see the color is very, very clearly on top of the image. We can't see the eye, the lips, anything. So it's covering most of our image. What we can do, however, is right click on our powder explosion layer, go to blending options, and I'll just move this out the way. And you'll see here we have the blend if section. Now we can grab these sliders and drag them, but it doesn't do anything particularly pleasing to the eye. You can see there's a lot of distortion around here. However, if we hold down Alt on the keyboard and left click on the right half of the slider, we can separate this and it allows us to easily blend this powder explosion onto what's underneath it, in this case, the subject. So of course you can take this to the extreme and you can blend it to the point where the subject layer is much more visible, so it depends what you're going for. And you can do the same with the right slider as well, hold Alt and separate that and you can bring it over. And it depends entirely on the image that you're working with, which of these two sliders is going to work most effectively. So I always like to try both. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit, but I want to try and find a balance between seeing the detail. So we've got the shadows and the highlights coming through. Even the skin detail is coming through the color, which is great, but it's a bit dull there. So I'm just going to bring this up and try and find a balance between vibrancy and bringing back the detail. So I'll turn this off. So this is where we were <laughs> and this is where we are now. So you can see we've, uh, we've made a considerable improvement. And we do have these bits here around the edge, so we're just going to add a layer mask and then use black and that feathered brush to just brush away anything that we don't want. And if you have a different colored background, you may need to get a nice small brush and carefully spend the time brushing around the edge of your subject like this. However, because I'm using an image that was on black, on an image that already had a black background and we've then blended it as well. We've blended those shadows in. This image is blended together beautifully. So we don't have to go and do any kind of cutting around the face. So it just depends on the images that you're working with. Now, what I am gonna do is just remove some of this effect from the eye. So with the mask selected, I'm gonna drop the opacity of the brush and just start to remove parts of it from the eye. Now, I'm not going to remove it entirely, I just want some of it to stay there. Just so it's like some of this is reflecting off the eye. So we've got this pretty cool pattern. We can move it around. However, if we move it around, you can see parts of this start to come back in. We have that, that hard edge, which is the edge of the image there. So if we click in between the layer and the mask on the link, this is now unlinked and we can move this around. The mask will stay exactly where it is. So we can reposition. And then you can relink just by clicking in between them once you're happy. And of course, because this is all done on adjustment layers, we can go back into our, let's say, exposure adjustment layer and we could darken this even more now. A little bit too dark. So there, we're keeping those all in that diagonal line. But as I say, this is just something I like to do. Feel free to adjust as you like. But of course, because our powder explosion blends into what's below it, it's now appearing darker. So we'll right click, go blending options, and we'll just grab this half of a slider and we can then adjust these. So where we made the exposure darker and it darkened this effect, 
we can then just go and bring this back up. So we bring back some of that color. Now we're going to add a couple of more adjustment layers as well. So let's add a curves adjustment layer. Now we want this curves adjustment layer to only apply to the powder explosion because I'd like to brighten it a little bit more, but I don't want this curves layer to affect anything else. So if I right click on it and select create clipping mask, you'll see an arrow appears next to it and the layer underneath is now underlined. And this indicates that this adjustment layer here is now only being applied to the layer below it. So if any changes I make like this, you can see it doesn't apply to the rest of the image and the subject and anything like that. So I'm just gonna grab the middle of this diagonal line and just drag it up and to the left ever so slightly. And we can preview that change. So it's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to go back onto that mask and use black to just remove some of these details because as I've adjusted the color there, some lighter details have started to come into the image. So just be mindful if you do make lots of adjustments or particularly drastic adjustments, you may need to go and just adjust masks here and there. But there we go. We can also adjust the color of the effect as well. So if we select our powder explosion, now any adjustment layer we add now will be added in between our layer and our existing adjustment layer that's had a clipping mask applied. So when we go and add, let's say, a hue and saturation adjustment layer, it's already got that arrow and is already part of the clipping mask. And we can tick colorize, bump up the saturation, and pick any color we like. Or we can just leave colorize unchecked and just adjust the hue. And what this will do is it will adjust all of the colors. And of course we can adjust saturation as well. But I think for this tutorial, I'm just going to move this to the left a little bit. So just a really subtle change. And there we go. So we've got our adjustment layers at the beginning that we use to adjust the skin tone of the subject and really darken the image. We then added our powder explosion and then we've added a couple of adjustment layers just to really enhance that powder explosion and bring it out. And there we go. That's how to create a crazy face powder explosion in Photoshop. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.